How would we know that this is a titration curve of a weak base with a strong acid? Well, first off, we look at the initial pH and we can see that it is above 7, so we know that inside our flask we have something that is basic. We can see that the portion of the curve near the equivalence point is not quite as steep as it would be with a strong acid or um, that was being titrated. And we can also look at the equivalence point. And we notice that it is in the acidic range, which means that it is not 7, so we know it is not a strong base with a strong acid. Because it's acidic, that means that uh, our conjugate acid of our weak base has a pH less than 7. And this helps to tell us that it is a weak base being titrated with a strong acid. We can also titrate polyprotic acids. So we've been looking at monoprotic up to this point, but polyprotic, we can tell because there are two different equivalence points or two portions of the curve that have a, a steep incline. And when we have polyprotic acids, the Ka, the first Ka, the, the dissociation of that first hydrogen tends to be much stronger than the second one. And the, the closer that those values are to each other, the um, harder it is to see the individual steps for the polyprotic acid. It makes it much more difficult to, to see them. But because there's multiple steps, we can tell that this is polyprotic. There's lots of different ways that we can monitor the pH during a titration. So some methods are that we've already looked at are using indicators where the color changes based on the uh, pH of our solution. We either have a indicator that is in the acidic form or we have an indicator that is in the basic form that is a different color. And so this particular example is phenolphthalene, where in the acidic form it's clear, and in the basic form it becomes a, a fuchsia or a pink color. We can also use a pH, in, uh, pH monitor. Okay. And we can do this because there are special electrodes that we can add into our solution that change and the conductivity changes based on the H3O plus concentration. And this allows us to tell the pH at any particular time. Using these probes, that's how we generally draw the, the titration curves of our solutions. So indicators are, they tend to be dyes, they are weak acids or weak bases themselves, and they establish an equilibrium. And that color of the solution depends on the relative concentrations of the basic form of the indicator or the acidic form of the indicator. Again, just like with our buffer solutions, they tend to work in a range of 0.1 to 10 of the basic form to the acidic form. And when we get in the middle, that's when we get a mixture of colors. And so these tend to, to change at plus or minus one pH unit from their pKa. So how do you know which indicator to choose for your titration? Well, it depends where the end point is 
where the most rapid change in pH is for your titration. And we want to pick an indicator that has a pKa that is about where that equivalence point is. And so depending on your um, which solutions you're titrating, there's a wide variety of indicators that can be used. And we've already seen this in the pH lab that we have done in, in the lab.